بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to this new Analog Designers Toolbox tutorial In this tutorial, we'll be examining the subthreshold characteristics of 7 nanometer FinFET transistors We'll have a look at the subthreshold slope, the GIDO, the GM over ID ratio, and the intrinsic gain of the transistors We will do all of this for a 7 nanometer PTM FinFET low VT in most device and as an exercise you will repeat all of this on your own for a two transistor stack and for a super low VT device. So let's go to the first part. We will plot the IP characteristics on a semi log scale and then we will extract the sub threshold slope of the transistor and we will see if there is GIDL or no. But before actually going to the simulator or to ADT, we need to see from our simple models and from our understanding of the operation of the transistor how do we expect the transistor to behave. In the top threshold or in the weakened version region, there is no channel formation in the MOSFET and we can see that it's actually an NPN structure, so it behaves like an NPN bipolar junction transistor. But the base is not directly connected to the gate, it is capacitively coupled. So we can say that the VBE is a fraction of the BGS and we define this factor N, which is actually always larger than 1. So we can use the same exponential characteristics of the VGT to define the drain current, but again the VBE will be replaced by VGS over N. For bulk MOSFET, the N is from 1.2 to 1.8, but for SI and FinFET, the N can be significantly better, it can be as low as 1.1. So if we take this exponential equation and we plot the VGS on the x-axis, I'll plot the VGS here, and we plot log ID on the y-axis, we'll find that this would be an equation of a straight line, this is the intercept, this is our x-axis, and this is our slope. So this will be the slope of this straight line. So we'll have here 1 over 2.3 NVT, where VT is the thermal voltage equal to KT over Q, which is around 26 millivolts at room temperature. I'll go now to edit. I opened an empty project. I will go to the device explorer interface. I will load an LUT. I will select the low VT in most device, click open, and as you see, it is loaded successfully here. Now I'll plot VGS on the x-axis, ID on the y-axis, click plot, and then I'll go here, I'll turn the log scale on the y-axis, I'll maximize the plot, and as you can see here, we have straight line characteristics in the subthreshold region, which matches our subthreshold model. In order to calculate the subthreshold slope, we need to find how much VGS change do we need in order to make a one decade change in the drain current. So I will add two horizontal cursors and I'll move these cursors to a current of one microampere. So the cursor is now here. I will add another cursor. I will double click on this label and here I will put 10 microampere, click enter. So now I have the VGS values in order to get a current of 1 microamp and 10 microamp, and the difference actually between these VGS values will be the subthreshold slope. So this is the plot we extracted from ADT, and again the subthreshold slope is defined as the change in VGS for a 10x change in the drain current. So we have the value of VGS at ID of 10 microamp, and we have the value of VGS at ID of 1 microamp. If we subtract these two values, we'll find that the subthreshold slope is around 87 millivolts per decade. So this answers the first part of the question. So the second part asks about the gate-induced drain leakage. If we have gate-induced drain leakage, this means that at low VGS values or at negative VGS values, we will have increased drain leakage current, which will show in the curve as some local minimum like this. So as we don't have this behavior, we can say that the GIDL is not evident in this transistor. We can also extract the subthreshold slope in an even better way. 
The subthreshold slope is basically the inverse of the slope of this straight line. So if I go to another plot here, I will use advanced y expression and I will define my subthreshold slope to be the inverse of the derivative of log the current to the base 10. So I'll close the brackets like this and then I'll hit plot. And this is my subthreshold slope. I maximize the plot. I will zoom in here and I want to extract the subthreshold slope in this region so I can add a magic cursor like this, maybe a PGS of 5 millivolts. I'll hit enter and this is my subthreshold slope. If we revisit our subthreshold model, we said that the slope is given by this value and the subthreshold slope actually is the inverse of this. So this is the subthreshold slope and this is the value extracted from ADT. So we can extract the value of this subthreshold factor n and to be given by 1.38. And again, we don't see any GIDL behavior here. If we have GIDL, then the subthreshold slope will actually increase at some point because that leakage current increases. Now we go to the second question, which asks about the GM over ID ratio and how does it compare to the subthreshold slope. But again, before going to the simulation results and before going to ADT, we need to see what do we expect from our transistor. If we start by going to the square law expectations, we have the famous definition of GM given by this equation, which is derived from the square law. And we can compute the GM over ID ratio as equal to 2 over the overdrive voltage. This actually means that if we plot VGS on the X axis and this is V threshold, the GM over ID ratio will peak to infinity as we approach the threshold voltage, which corresponds to an overdrive voltage equal to zero. And of course, this is not the case because, as we know, the square law is completely invalid when we operate in the moderate inversion and in the weak inversion regions. If we go to the subthreshold model, which gives good results in the weak inversion region, we'll find that the GM over ID ratio actually saturates and it is related to the subthreshold slope by this equation. So what we expect in the weak inversion region is to find a constant GM like this. So this is the weak inversion model, and this is the square law model. And of course, in between, we'll have a smooth transition like this, which is the moderate inversion region. As we already extracted the value of the subthreshold slope, we can calculate the expected maximum value of the GM over ID, which will be around 28. So we expect to see a GM over ID of 28 in this region. So now we go to ADT to see if the simulation results match our expectations from our models. So I will go to plot 1C. I have VGS on the x-axis. I will put the GM over ID ratio on the y-axis and I'll plot like this. I'll maximize the plot. And as you can see, as we expect, the GM over ID ratio increases as we go towards the weakened version and then it saturates. And this glitch is probably a bug in the simulation model. So let's add a cursor here. So I added the vertical cursor. I will go to the weakened version. And as you can see, we have a maximum GM over ID around 28, which matches our expectations from the weakened version model. So again, we compare our ADT results to our weak inversion model results. And as we see, given the subthreshold slope value previously extracted, the relation between the GM over ID and the subthreshold slope is given by this equation. And the theoretical value of the GM over ID matches the value given by the simulations. Before moving to the next part, let's get an intuitive understanding of the GM over ID ratio and how does it relate to the ID characteristics. Here I calculate the derivative of log ID, which is essentially the slope of the ID characteristics when I have log scale on the y-axis. And we'll find that this slope is actually proportional to the GM over ID. So we can actually intuitively understand here that because we have a large slope in the weak inversion region, 
we expect to see a large M over ID. And because this is like a straight line, then the slope is constant. And that's why the J over ID is almost constant in the weak inversion region. As we go towards the strong inversion region, we see that the slope decreases. And that's why the J over ID ratio decreases, as we see here. So this is the reason we have the maximum efficiency in the weak inversion, because we have the maximum slope. And we have the least efficiency in the strong inversion, because we have the least slope. From this visualization, we can also examine the GIDL behavior. If we have GIDL, the leakage current will increase like this, and this means the slope decreases. So if we have GIDL, we'll find a decrease in the GM over ID like this because the slope decreases, and because we don't have this behavior, then GIDL is not evident in this transistor. Now we get to the last part in which we will examine the intrinsic gain of the transistor and what is the operating point that maximizes the intrinsic gain. So as usual, before going to the simulation results, we must start by our simplified models to see what we expect from our transistor and in order to be able to judge the simulation results and to say that it makes sense or no. So this is our intrinsic gain equal to GMR node and R node, as we know, is given by the early voltage divided by the drain current. So essentially, the intrinsic gain is the product of the GM over ID ratio and the early voltage. So we expect the intrinsic gain to have exactly the same profile of the GM over ID if the early voltage is constant. So if you go to the square law prediction, it will be given by this equation. And again, similar to the GM over ID, if you plot VGS on the x-axis, and here we have the intrinsic gain on the y-axis, the square law prediction will tell you that the intrinsic gain will go to infinity as we approach this threshold, but we know that this is not the case because, as we said, it's completely invalid when we go to moderate inversion and weak inversion. So if you go to the sub-threshold model prediction, again, it will expect a constant intrinsic gain similar to the constant GM over ID ratio. So this is the weak inversion model. And we expect to see a maximum gain around VA, the early voltage, divided by NVT. And of course, N is the subthreshold factor, and VT here is the thermal voltage. But the actual behavior will not be exactly like this, because as we go towards weak inversion, VGS starts losing control on the transistor, and the effect of VDS becomes larger. And the effect of VDS is exactly what the early voltage models. So as we go towards weak inversion, we expect that the early voltage will decrease to indicate a stronger VDS effect. And this means that the intrinsic gain will not actually saturate. It will peak, then it decreases again like this because the early voltage decreases. And of course, in the moderate inversion, we'll have a smooth transition between the strong inversion and the weak inversion regions. So this will be our moderate inversion, and we expect an intrinsic gain profile like this. So now we are ready to go to ADT and see the actual simulation data and the actual behavior of the transistor. So I will add a new figure here like this. I have four more plots. I will put VGS on the x-axis, and I will put the intrinsic gain on the y-axis, and I'll plot here my figure. And this actually matches our expectations exactly. The intrinsic gain increases as we go towards weak inversion, and it peaks. Then it starts decreasing again, because we expect that the VGS is losing control and the early voltage degrades in this region. In order to verify our understanding, let's plot the early voltage itself. So in order to plot the early voltage, we can make use of the expression manager here. The expression manager has predefined expressions of some of the most popular parameters used by analog designers, and you can actually add more expressions if you want. And you can see here that we have the definition for the early voltage is equal to ID divided by GDS. So I can go to the advanced Y expression, and I can write VA, and I can plot it directly. And as we expect, the early voltage degrades as we go to the weak inversion region, and this causes here the degradation in the intrinsic gain, so we have a peak like this. So if we want to find this peak, I can add a vertical cursor, 
and I can move my cursor to find the point that maximizes the intrinsicity. We can also look at this from another perspective by using the GM over ID ratio as the x-axis instead of the VGS. So I will here go to plot 2B and I will import my settings from plot 2A. So these are the settings of plot 2A. I will select the GM over ID as my x-axis and I'll hit plot. And as you can see, the game is actually almost constant for a wide range of GM over ID. So this is strong inversion region, and this is the weak inversion region, and this is the moderate inversion region, and we can see that the game is almost constant as long as we don't go to very, very strong inversion or we don't go to the deep subthreshold. We can do the same here in plot 2D. I can import plot 2C. So this is the early voltage here. I will change the x-axis to be the GM over ID ratio. I will hit plot. And again, as we expect, as we go to weak inversion, which means large GM over ID, we have degradation of the early voltage. So our expectations match our simulations. So please visit our website and get your free ADT personal license. Start using ADT and send us your feedback we really want to make designers happy. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial.